Hello everyone, welcome back to the Dividend Challenge, which I deposit at least $250 into the stock market every single Monday and Wednesday. And this week, by the end of this video, I'll also talk about how you can save money during Black Friday and also while you're shopping, get those cash back. And this video, like by the end of this video, you'll learn how to earn at least $240 basically free money just from spending money just from shopping and of course I'll never want you to you know spend money on anything that you didn't plan to so you know just yeah keep that in mind <laughs> let's get started so let's take a look at the Weeple account, which is my smallest account right here. You can see it right now I'm at $471.90 and I actually transfer a lot of money out of this account because I don't want to keep like a lot of cash in here. And Weeple does have a delay, like it does take them a couple business days for them to, you know, transfer your stocks and also for them to like withdraw your money from this account to your bank account. And because of that delay, I'm just like, you know what? Before I actually need that money, I just want to actually take it out of this account so that it's sitting in my bank account and ready for me to use. And I don't necessarily have to be too worried about that delay time period. And um, Weeple also has paper trading, which is really awesome. So over here you can see for paper trading, I'm currently at 1.5 mil. Dang, I'm up by 50.75%. And main thing is because Tesla is really going crazy again. It's almost up by 300% in my paper trading portfolio. But keep in mind, this is not like real money. The reason why I use paper trading is just to, you know, get a sense of what it's like to be, you know, a, a million dollar account holder. I don't have million dollars in my like investment portfolios yet. Maybe I'll get there soon, but yeah, I'm not there yet. So um, it's kind of cool just to play with paper money and to see, you know, how are your blind stock picks. And it almost seems like my blind stock picks are better than my actual stock picks. What is this conspiracy theory? And so um, with that being said, Weeble also has, you know, free stocks. So if you want to get free stocks, just use the link in my info box to get free stocks. Now that we've taken a look at the small portfolio, which is my Weeble portfolio and where my play money is, let's take a look at M1 Finance, which is my dividend investing portfolio. So this is my cherry pie. Damn, it is up by 37.53%. Whew, I bet it's Tesla holding the entire team. Yes. Oh my gosh. Tesla's up by 370.37%. And today Tesla's price is $574. Whew. You know, should have held on to more Tesla, you know? Tesla is again back and back in the game with you know Morgan Stanley's upgrade and being included in the S&P 500 so um, you can definitely see this has a lot to do with the current price of Tesla which is at $486.64 even though you know before it was you know looming over the 410 and 420 today definitely Tesla experienced another boost and my average share price that you know I bought into the fractional shares with M1 Finance my average share price is $112.40 which means just with Tesla, I am up by 297.95%, aka $4,654.68. But hindsight is always 2020. It's totally fine. Cherry, you have to keep calm. It's totally okay. And other other stocks in my pie or in my tech slice includes Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Visa, and Ultrix. Oh my gosh, Tesla. Yo, why did I sell? FOMO. Dang. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. I still have some Tesla. You know, yeah. Whew. And then um, there's also real estate. Real estate um, is up by 18%. So this NRZ, real estate income, store capital, SPG for malls and LTC for senior housing and well tower and all of them are up. Overall, the market's looking really green. And um, so far, I'm already up by $9,000 in my dividend investing portfolio, which again, it's not like strictly dividend investing because you can probably see that, you know, I have Tesla in there and Tesla is not dividend paying. But the reason why I put it here is because in the past, Robinhood, which is like my growth portfolio, where my growth portfolio used to be. It did not have fractional share buying, so I have to, you know, save up until I can buy an entire share of Tesla back then. And it was really quite expensive, like at least a couple hundred dollars back then, even in 2019 and 2018. And so because of that, I've decided to put some Tesla into my M1 Finance portfolio, which I deposit money, you know, every single week into this portfolio, and it just automatically gets allocated into these different stocks, different slices that I've preset. For example, you know, um, I will, put 20% of my money into tech and within tech I will put 40% of my tech money into Tesla and this is just the preset allocation that I've set up and I just like it this way it's just like really out of sight out of mind very automatic and um, also I don't have to focus too much on the stock price because everything is so automatic and um, over here you can see like if I swipe up my auto invest is on and um, I have just a 
couple cents in this account. Once a cash balance goes over $25, it does get reinvested directly back into the portfolio. So it doesn't even matter if this cash is from dividends or if this cash is from your actual deposits. Once this amount is over $25, it just automatically reinvests. So that's why um, also if you have a bigger portfolio, it might be easier for you to just like keep snowballing your wealth because you'll be able to meet this threshold much more frequently. And um, you can also see this is like the little chart and um, it keeps on going up except for the little dip in March, which is why it is so important to practice long-term investing and long-term thinking, because if I let go and that little dip in March, then you know I would be in the red, I would lose money in the stock market, and this portfolio wouldn't exist. And um, another good thing about M1 Finance is that it also allows you to do automatic dividend reinvesting. So I kind of mentioned that earlier in this video when I talked about how when your cash reaches $25, everything just gets automatically reinvested into your portfolio, which means it's really out of sight, out of mind. You don't really have to, you know, worry too much about it. And I have a full tutorial on how to use M1 Finance with just your phone over here. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And um, I also, of course, have a link in my info box if you want to give M1 Finance a shot. And that is also going to help out this channel. Now that we've taken a look at the dividend investing portfolio, let's take a look at the growth portfolio. And, um, it's an exciting day, let's just say. So this is my Fidelity growth portfolio. Currently, I'm at $149,421.97. By the day, I am down by 0.32%, down by $485.06. And here are my positions. I have Tesla, Visa, Revolve, CCL, Planet, Planet, Planet 13, PSEC, 3M, and this is just my cash. I have cash of around $8,000 in Starbucks, Tapestry, Elf, MasterCard, MasterCard, I can't talk today. MasterCard, Facebook, Baba, and Disney. So here are all my stocks. And over here, you can see that by the day, the reason why it's down is because of Elf, Disney, Tapestry, Baba, and Facebook, MasterCard, and Starbucks. These are temporarily down, but nothing too drastic. When I say too drastic, it's like over 5%. Then I would start to look into the reasons, but you know, normal volatility between like one to 4%, that's pretty normal. And um, of course, with Tesla, <laughs> Let's take a look at how, how volatile is Tesla. Uh, yeah, Tesla is up by 4%. Uh, not, not as volatile as I thought, but you know, Tesla has been up by a lot lately. So congrats to all my Tesla shareholders. Lobster dinner on you, yeah. <laughs> and um, you can see in my total gain and loss, if I arrange it by total gain and loss, you can see I am only losing on one stock and this is PSEG and um, I am down by 7.31%, but because this is a dividend paying stock, I'm not too worried about, you know, temporarily having paper losses or unrealized losses because it doesn't really matter to me. I don't really like use this stock to help me grow my portfolio. If anything, it's like all the other growth stocks. This is just like a sole like dividend paying stock. And of course, Tesla again, 662.23%. I did let go of some Tesla earlier on before they announced like being part of the S&P 500 just because I'm more, you know, risk averse and I don't want to just put all my eggs into one basket. And I do have Tesla in two of my three portfolios. So that's why I did let go of some, but um, it's okay. It's all good. FOMO, FOMO. And you can see overall, I'm up by $38,472.97. And um, that is my growth portfolio. So now that we've, you know, taken a look at the three portfolios and Black Friday is, you know, coming up and probably when you're watching this video is already Black Friday. Let's talk about how to save money because I know a lot of people, they get, you know, intrigued by all these deals and all these sales. Of course, the number one rule is never buy something that you did not plan on buying. The only things I plan on buying in the last Black Friday um, were the things that I needed at my new place, which is like this place is almost our one year anniversary living in my first home purchase. Um, so that is like all I did in my Black Friday. So everything was like furniture or like, let's say like a vacuum. So very, very practical things. And I never, you know, want to buy anything just because it's on sale because that way you can't really control your spending. You are just buying solely because of the offers and sales. And you also don't get that like true happiness and joy out of using your items because these were not items that you needed in the first place. So here are four different ways that you can get cash back from, you know, this Black Friday. So the first way is to sign up for credit cards that have really good cash back deals. So this is one deal that I found from Chase. Chase actually has two cards. One is the unlimited and another one is the flex. So the two cards from Chase Case, these two cards have a zero annual fee and they also have cash back. If you spend $500 in the first three months of account opening, you get 
$500 back. That's like almost half of your money back. And honestly, spending $500 in three months, it's not that difficult, especially if you have to buy your groceries, if you have to, let's say, pay for your insurance, if you have to even pay for car insurance, honestly. Like, it's not that hard to meet $500 in three months. So this is definitely the first way and like honestly biggest dollar amount that I immediately think of. And credit card turning is one of my income streams and it used to be something that I did a lot more frequently. It's just that lately I got kind of busy with my business and you know, with every everything that I'm juggling, 16 income streams. That's why I haven't been so consistent with credit card churning. And also there is a set amount. So you can't, you know, churn credit cards forever. For example, there's that 524 rule. You can read more into it by Googling, but um, basically you can't churn too many credit cards at the same time. With that being said, if you don't have a lot of credit cards currently and you are looking for, you know, a really good reliable company that has a really good cash back system, definitely consider the Chase, like the two cards, the Flex card and the Unlimited card. Uh, I think it's called Freedom Unlimited. I will link all of them in my info box. The second way is Rakuten. And Rakuten used to be called, I think, Ebates or something like that. Um, and I really, really, really like this plugin. The reason why I really like it is because I have gotten so much cash back from it and it's so convenient. It's just a Chrome plugin. And every single time you shop in an, you know, let's say online website, right? <laughs> you do online shopping, this thing pops up and it tells you how much percentage you get back. And um, what I also like about it is that it's not too intrusive. Usually if you don't click on that button, it's not going to pop up. So it'll only pop up if you've already decided to, you know, scroll on a website. It's not going to just like bombard you with all the deals and offers. And it is more unlikely for you to spend money that you didn't plan on spending. So I also really like using Rakuten. And ever since I opened my account, I have already gotten almost $500, $500 from just, you know, cashback of stuff I would have already bought like any Anyway, I don't spend any extra money just because there are cashback offers. But then, of course, I want to take advantage of cashback offers when they are available for the items that I was already planning on buying. So Rakuten is also like one plugin that I just love so much. I've been using Rakuten for such a long time. And um, that is even before the name change, before they were acquired. And um, yeah, just... I love this, I love this plugin, and a lot of people also swear by this plugin. And I also have a referral link in my info box and you can get $40 for free by just signing up. The third one is Fetch Rewards, which is what I've recently found. This is basically a receipt scanner, and what's great about this is that it is very, very easy, very simple. It only takes you a couple seconds. You don't have to search for offers ahead of time. You can just scan the receipts you have in hand. Like, the whole thing is just so easy. I signed up, I think, yesterday, and within a day, I already got 10 bucks back just from scanning the receipts I already have. So it's not even from, you know, let's say buying extra things and it's not even from intentionally saving my receipts. Everything's just so easy and so simple. And um, honestly, like this changed my mind when it comes to couponing apps because I used to think it's so tedious, but Fetch is really super easy. It takes you three seconds to just take a photo, snap a photo of your receipt and you can get cash back. So how it works is that you get points and then with points, you can then exchange those points for gift cards. And I've already accumulated 10 bucks worth of gift cards, one from Ultra and one from Amazon. And all of these are like, you know, really big name stores. You don't have to be worried about not having a wide selection because Fesh does have a really wide selection of gift cards. And of course, you can also get free 2000 points from my referral link. The last one is Ibotta. So I've heard a lot of good things about Ibotta and I believe I'll put a screenshot here. One of my subscribers even said that he has invested the money he has gotten from Ibotta and he has gotten over $700 by investing just the money that he got from Ibotta, which is like a lot of money when you think about it, like $700 of like basically free money. Of course, like he has to pay capital gains tax if he decides to sell it. But if it's in his retirement account, wait, if it's in his retirement account, then maybe he doesn't have to. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know which account it's in, but um, it's just really great that he's able to basically have free money. But Ibotta is a little more time consuming. You actually have to find the offers first and then select the offers after you scan your receipts. So it's like slightly more time consuming, but then the deals are a lot better. And sometimes you get like up to three bucks back for each item that you buy, which is like, dang, a lot of money. And what is good about Ibotta is that you can also use receipts from like quite a long time ago, like a couple months ago. I found some old receipts from like, let's say Whole Foods 
and I got a couple of bucks back just from scanning old receipts. So that's also really great. And you can also add people into your own team. So it can be like a team kind of thing. And all of you guys can earn money by just scanning, scanning receipts. And of course, I also have a link in the info box. And if you complete the task, you can get 10 bucks for free. $10, man, $10. So definitely check out the link in my info box. And with that being said, here are my top four ways of getting cash back and saving money during Black Friday sales. And I know it's very enticing during this time. I don't blame you if you want to go out and, you know, get some shopping done. But of course, and never spend money that you're not planning to spend and always consider everything carefully, consider your purchases carefully, consider how you spend money and how you're saving money and getting cash backs, right? I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next wealth building video.